Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome as we gather together today to uh, commemorate the uh, second anniversary of announcing the cause uh, for the uh, beatification and canonization of our friend, uh, priest of this diocese, uh, Father Joseph Walieski. Today happens to be his 91st birthday. And so as we gather, we commemorate his being born into uh, time and history and space here uh, on this earth. And we pray in a special way for his, uh, his, his being born again into the fullness of God's kingdom and God's glory in the kingdom of heaven. And then obviously being given back to us as a saint of the, of the Catholic Church. The very important element of our faith, realizing that all of us, by virtue of our baptism, are called to be saints. And, uh, and in God's time, and according to the, uh, the, the teachings of the church, then from among us, saints uh, are chosen those whom we publicly venerate and, uh, and pray through their intercession uh, to our blessed Lord. So as we gather together, there is a great deal of, of joy and happiness in our hearts and a profound uh, prayer to our Lord and Savior that, that he will receive the soul of Father Joe and give him back to us as a, as a saint so that we can publicly venerate him and remind ourselves of, of his heroic holiness. So we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Let us pray. O oh God, in the covenant of your Christ, you never cease to gather to yourself from all nations a people growing together in unity through the Spirit. Grant, we pray, that your church, faithful to the mission entrusted to her, may continually go forward with the human family and always be the leaven and the soul of the human society, to renew it in Christ and transform it into the family of God. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy.
Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, 
the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All of this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbath, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, amongst you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever li lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Fourth Sunday of Lent, folks. Here we are, uh, more than halfway through the great season of grace that is given to us to help us to reflect and to move our hearts closer and closer to pondering the wonderful mercies of Almighty God. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. There's a great um, little saying written by uh, the great American author and humorist Mark Twain, who once said, God created man in his own image and likeness, and man, being a gentleman, returned the favor. And it's probably something that we need to think about in terms of our relationship with Almighty God. God made us. We didn't make him. And yet we don't ever remember that. In so many ways, we don't remember that. We are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. St. Paul reminds us in his beautiful, letter to the Ephesians. And if you have a chance this afternoon and you're looking for something to do, take your Bibles at home and read the letter to the Ephesians, a magnificent letter of St. Paul to inspire Christians, to help them to understand with what foreknowledge God who created all things made each and every one of us and how in the loving plan of Almighty God we are brought to life in Christ Jesus. And how it is in Christ Jesus that we survive, that we, that we come to the fullness of, of hope, the challenge 
of growth each and every day. But there is still that sense of truth, that grain of truth in what Mark Twain said. God made us. Oh, yes, and we're so, so many times, you know, we're so focused on that. We really do want to return glory and praise to God. We really do want to see the mercy and the justice of God. Yet, when we try to contemplate the mercy and the justice of God, we see ourselves blameless. So, what need have we for justice? And we see ourselves as sinless. So what need have we of mercy? And so we're right back to that, that saying, God made us and so we keep making God, remaking God. We keep thinking God is like us instead of our trying more and more and more to be like God. Today, the fourth Sunday of Lent, the church in her wisdom focuses on the theme of light. These, these three Sundays in Lent, the third, fourth, and fifth Sundays, are given to us so that the elect, those who are coming to the sacraments of Christian initiation, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist at Easter, these three Sundays are given to us in particular so that we may focus ourselves on three particular themes that the church gives us in terms of preparing with them and reminding ourselves of what baptism is all about. The first, of course, comes on the third Sunday. Last week we reflected on the themes of water and life, the themes of rebirth, generation. Today, the theme of light. And next week, of course, the theme of life. These three particular areas are all part and parcel. We dissect them and see them as part of the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist part and parcel of our lives of, as Catholic Christians each and every day. And so we have this beautiful reading from the third chapter of St. John's Gospel. And we see it all the time. Every time you go to a basketball game or a football game or whatever kind of, of sports where there are going to be cameras trained on the fans, Somebody is sitting there invariably with John 3.16 on a sign. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Now here's the kicker, and this is the one we wrestle with, and this is a part that goes back to Mark Twain's statement. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. We have problems with that. Many of us believe that the only reason Jesus came into the world was because God was angry. And we've got a big deal of fear about God's anger. That first reading today reminds us about God's anger. Seventy years, the Babylonian captivity, people led away by Nebuchadnezzar and the Assyrians. And then, finally, King Cyrus, the king of the Persians, the Iranians and the Iraqis come and take care and bring the Jews back to Jerusalem. How ironic. How ironic. We believe that God is angry. It's easier for us to believe that because we get angry. We understand anger. 
We understand resentment, we understand fear, we understand all of those things that make us uneasy in life. And therefore, we project all of those onto God. God must be the same way. Not so. I attended a uh, lecture from, um, given by Father Robert Barron, who is the current rector at uh, Mundelein Seminary, where a number of our seminarians study. It's the, uh, it's the seminary for the Archdiocese of Chicago, the major seminary. They study in their last four years of theology before being ordained priests. Several of them, many of them, study at Mundelein, where Father Barron is rector. And Father Barron talked about this anger of God once in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a homily or a presentation that he was given. And he talked about the wrath of God. He said, we really do need to understand that. Because when we think about the wrath of anybody, we think about anger. We think about something that is just scary. You don't want to be involved with. And God has a different kind of passion in terms of his anger. Because when we think about God's anger, we think we need to really think about God's passion. Because God loves us with such an incredibly intense love that he can't see and he can't understand, if you will, you know, because God, of course, can understand everything. But he doesn't get our willingness to sin. Sin is just the thing that keeps us away from him. And if there's, if there's anger, if there's passion that God has about anything, it's the fact that Sin keeps us away from him. And so God's passion is passionate love. And God's passion is, is, a, is a sense of jealousy for us, wanting us, loving us, wanting us so deeply, more than we could understand ourselves. But we would look and we would see this idea of the wrath of God as being something that we really need to stay away from. Father Barron said it probably would be a good idea if we had a church named Wrath of God Parish. That, you know, when you call the church someday, the high school kid answers the phone, hello, Wrath of God. Be yeah, a kind of an interesting thought if we were to really think about God's passion for us in a way that He wants us. He wants us so desperately and so much. And that's why God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. And many of us will believe that on Good Friday as we come together and we pray and we remember what happened to Jesus, we think some way, somehow, that God, the Father, killed his son, allowed him to be killed. And boy, oh boy, when God gets mad, stay clear. It's quite the contrary. When God loves, you want to draw closer. Because if God's love is so strong, how can you stay away? If his love is so strong that he will give himself, give himself his son to protect us from sin, to keep anything that would separate us from him. And so, St. John says, and this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light 
Isn't it a problem in our world as we see so many different kinds of ways in which the darkness continues to make progress into the lives of people of good, good faith? People who are trying their level best are being overcome by evil. People who are being innocent people who are being overtaken by the sadness of death, the, 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 the atrocities that are being leveled against humanity. Darkness continues. People preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. We still make choices. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might be exposed. Now, this is, this is the scripture written by St. John the Evangelist. We need to understand its practicality for us today. Last line. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. That's the challenge to the baptized. That's the challenge to each and every one of us. Whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. Today we are praying once again for the beatification and the canonization of a beloved priest of this diocese, Father Joe Walieski. And of himself, Joe was no different than any one of us, and he'd be the first one to admit it. Sadly, I did not have knowledge of him personally in this world. And I really wish I had. But I understand him so much more clearly because of this gospel and in terms of the light of faith that is ours in the Catholic Church. Because there are those in our lives, there are those in our reality who stand up to the darkness, who refuse to allow the darkness to overtake them, who stand up and are leaders who bring light into the world, who refuse to see darkness, ignorance, prejudice, difficulties, hatred, refuse to see those things that belittle and hold back the human person made in the image and the likeness of God from shining brightly and beautifully as a child of God. Father Joe took that message very seriously and went to a place that I would never go to. I'll tell you, right up, the, right up front. And I was just there a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, and it's, it's a hundred times better than it was when he was there. And I wouldn't go there. I'm a creature, com I'm, a, I'm a guy of creature comforts. And I'm kind of happy with the things that are here. But I sure do appreciate and understand and know and love those who are able to forsake those things and go and work in a place where people have absolutely nothing. And it is there that he brings the truth of the gospel, the light of faith in Jesus Christ. And there that he establishes parish churches where people like us come together and hear the gospel preached 
and go back to their own homes, whatever homes they may have made of sticks, cardboard, little shanties, whatever they may be, they went back with the knowledge of the truth of the gospel, that they indeed were children of God, made in the image and the likeness of God and that they had a purpose and a beauty and a dignity that is theirs. And that truth, which is the truth of Jesus Christ, because it's not ours, as St. Paul reminds us in the Ephesians. It is the truth that is given to us. It is a gratuitous gift of God, his mercy, his love, his faithfulness that that grows in our appreciation of it. And that as it grows, we come to understand ever more deeply the power of God in our lives. And that's what's happened. And that's why Father Joe has become such a, an emblem of the gospel message that we are trying to interiorize that we are trying to recall and, and, and make our own, that when we are, that when we are tempted to, to think about the darkness that surrounds us, we will remember the light of Christ, that when we are tempted to, to think of ourselves as blameless, we will remember the justice and, of, of God. When we think of ourselves as sinless, we will understand more deeply the mercy of God, how we are held by the jealousy of God, how his, his passion holds us. Because not only do we have those wonderful ideas, those eternal truths of life emblazoned for us in the scripture, but we see it in images of men and women whom we know, people in our own lives. Father Joe was such a man. Each and every one of us is called to be a saint. Each and every one of us is called to be a part of God's elect. Through baptism, we are one with Christ. In the life of the church, in the life of grace, we are called to remind ourselves that every single day we need to be aware of that and live that and show the world that the light of Christ is present. And each and every day we give praise and thanks to God. We know it can be done because we know those who have done it before us and have followed Christ and will someday enter into that eternal kingdom to which may God lead us all. maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Lord and the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, truth from truth, For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At the end of the uh, general intercessions, which we are about to pray, we will uh, pray the, uh, the prayer for the beatification and canonization of Father Joe. At the end of the prayer, there is a, a little space where you can insert your own uh, particular intention. When you pray this prayer quietly and, and uh, at home, uh, it is a time to be able to remember some particular request that you are making to our Lord through the intercession of Father Joe. And uh, we believe through the intercession of saints that God hears our prayers with a little bit more oomph when they come from us and come through somebody whom, whom we hope and pray is, is there in heaven saying, God, hey, take a look. You know, these people are asking for this. And so, uh, so we ask through the intercession of saints, through the intercession of those in heaven. And so, uh, so we'll pray this prayer. So when that little time comes for you to make your own intention, we'll just put in a little uh, pause for, uh, for silence, and then we'll continue on with the end of the prayer. By, the grace, by grace we have been saved. And so, in God's grace, let us pray for the needs of the church and the world. For the church, that God will look kindly upon her and grant an increase of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace, that we will see an end of war and terrorism, so that people can live in tranquility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need, that our Lenten disciplines will help them in body, mind, and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth's natural resources, that humanity will use what God has given for the betterment of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our confirmation students, that we pray for them daily as they desire to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and his sevenfold gifts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the advancement of the cause of Father Joseph Walieski, servant of God, that the faithful of the Church will be blessed to canonize an individual who lived and worked among us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our personal intentions and those inscribed in the Cathedral Book of Prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the faithful departed, especially Father John Cassidy, Charles Felker, Philomena Buschek, and Irene Heasley, that God will grant them eternal rest in heaven. We remember as well the intention of this Mass, which is for Mary Hallert's. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Won't you please join me? Holy and good God, your servant and priest, Father Joseph Walieski, through priestly zeal and heroic holiness, defended innocence against the sadness of evil, especially to broken families and helpless children. Imaging the compassionate Christ, he led others to the font of sacramental life and the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their true and only Savior. Heavenly Father, we humbly pray you to raise up your servant, Father Joseph Walieski, whose joyful priestly heart was resolute in the heart of Christ Jesus to the courts of heaven. And through your Holy Spirit, 
who guides and leads the church, give him to us as a saint and hero of this generation. Through his example, may there be a new urgency of souls for Christ. Through his intercession, I humbly ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and the good of all His Holy Church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we are claimed. Sanctus, 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 Dominus indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her son, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Bishop Callahan for being here this morning and being the principal celebrant of this Mass as we continue to pray and hope that Father Walieski will one day be declared a saint in the Catholic Church. It's also a good way, too, to begin this day for our sophomores who are wanting and desiring and asking to be confirmed. They will be confirmed in just a little over a month from now, so I'd ask that you please continue to pray for them. And Father Hennis is going to be leading them in a retreat this afternoon. A representative from the Knights of Columbus is in the gathering area of the church to meet with anyone who would like to ask questions of the Knights or also who might be interested in joining the Knights of Columbus. And that will be in the gathering area. Also, I believe there's a representative to talk about the Lady Knights as well. Next Sunday morning, the men's club will be sponsoring the last pancake and omelet breakfast for the fiscal year, and that will be held in the Undercroft. So I hope that you make plans to come next Sunday to have a good breakfast here at the cathedral. Script is available to be purchased right after this Mass in the gathering area of the church as well. And I want to thank all those who have given to Wafer and our Works of Charity account this weekend to help the people in our area who are in need. Now I have a major announcement to make and doesn't involve changes of these uh, wonderful priests who are here. So you can breathe easily about that. This is a good announcement about, uh, about our positive movement forward with the uh, prayer and uh, uh, works to uh, uh, advance the cause of, of Father Joe. We have been working on a major video. It's going to be an hour-long presentation. It is going to be viewed on, uh, be able to be viewed on EWTN. Now this means national and global coverage of the, uh, of the cause for, for Father Joe's beatification and canonization. But more significantly, it's an opportunity for people to come to know Father Joe who never knew him before. So this, if God wants, will be shown on the anniversary of his death, April 11th. Today is the anniversary of his birth, and the anniversary of his death will be April the 11th. He died serving the people of God and the church and our blessed Lord in Peru, and he died two days after um, uh, Palm Sunday. So he died during Holy Week, in 2006. So I'm hoping and praying that uh, we're going to be able to keep the timeline together and that you're going to be able to see this. Um, we will try to, to, to make it available for those of you who may not have cable uh, in, uh, in viewing places around, uh, around the diocese. We don't know just exactly how we're going to be able to disseminate copies of, of, the, of the video, but I got to tell you, folks, this is, uh, this is a gripper. So uh, this is one you're going to want to see and uh, definitely something that you're going to be able to walk out after you see, knowing that uh, this man, this priest, is, uh, is a dynamic man who has done wonderful things uh, within, within our diocese, uh, within the causes of our diocese, our missions, in Peru and Bolivia, and uh, now we're praying for him to become a saint. So you'll see it in the, in the, in the parish bulletin and in parish bulletins across, uh, across the diocese. Um, it will be a, a video that will, uh, will be shown again on EWTN. It'll be about an hour long, and uh, we hope that you'll take time to see it and that you will take time to promote it and once you see it, then to promote Father Joe in your own prayers, 
and to promote him to others as well so that more and more people will come to know of him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, your families, your friends, and whatever good you do, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.